Welcome everybody to today's webinar about Bluetooth 5. My name is Ben Hickner and I'm, I've worked for Toshiba for more than 17 years in various roles, ranging from IC development, business development and standardization to technical marketing. For the past four years, I've focused on developing MCU and Bluetooth-based solutions for innovative markets such as wearable devices, smart home, and smart building. I'm currently responsible for Bluetooth products at Toshiba Europe. We will start the webinar by looking at some of the challenges that need to be addressed and how Bluetooth 5 can help to overcome them. Then, we will unpack some of the major features uh, offered by Bluetooth 5 standard and discuss what they are, what the benefits are in general, and offer some specific application examples. Afterwards, we'll look at Toshiba's Bluetooth 5 solutions, the competitive landscape, and how our Bluetooth IC um, and our Bluetooth IC lineup. Then, I'll share a handy IC selection guide and explain how you can get started with Toshiba in your Bluetooth journey. Finally, you'll get the opportunity to ask some questions. There is a trend for bringing more intelligence into residential homes and commercial buildings. The main goal is to reduce energy consumption while increasing security and convenience. The desire to reduce energy consumption is not only motivated by reducing the energy cost, but it is also driven by regulations from the government who are eager to reach their CO2 targets and hence provide incentives to building owners for reducing the CO2 footprint of their premises. As most buildings are already in existence, <coughs> retrofitting um, <coughs> retrofitting new smart <coughs> sorry <coughs> retrofitting new smart devices via wireless connections is appealing for several reasons, like lower costs compared to wire based solutions. The challenge is to provide long range reliability and low power wireless connections. Another trend is leading towards smart cities. According to Gartner, 100 million new LED street lamps will be installed in 2021. There is an enormous potential in putting more intelligence into each street lamp to reduce maintenance effort and save energy by switching them off when they are not needed. Also, in this application, wireless, power connectivity, wireless low power connectivity between the street lamps is beneficial with a few street lamps that have LTE connectivity to a central control facility. Again, long range, robust communication is key. In current vehicles, Bluetooth is already being used for connectivity with smartphones and headsets, but connectivity to key fobs and the tire pressure monitoring system, also known as TPMS, often uses separate proprietary sub-gigahertz solutions. In order to optimize the in-vehicle system, greater in integration is required. Therefore, it makes sense to reuse the existing Bluetooth infrastructure in the car for con connectivity to the key fob and TPMS. As there is naturally a lot of metal in a car, there is a very high link budget required in order to overcome severe attenuation from the car itself. Coming from Germany, there is the trend towards what is called Industry 4.0, which basically means more intelligent and connected systems in a factory environment in order to achieve higher information transparency. This goes with the addition of sensors that are ideally connected wirelessly for flexibility and cost reasons. One use case example is to attach sensors, such as an ultrasound sensor, to a motor for predictive maintenance, so that defects can be detected a long time before the motor breaks down. This requires long distance communication and robustness in a harsh factory environment.
rising world population and changing diets are driving the demand for more food at an affordable price. Therefore, there is a need to get higher yield and increase productivity from a given area of farmland. Labor costs can be reduced by using wireless sensor networks to monitor the fields. These sensors can also provide early warnings of extreme climatic conditions to prevent the harvest from being damaged. Long distance communication is required to each sensor spread over the field. Especially in industrial applications, it is crucial to be able to fix security holes quickly once they have been detected. One simple method is to perform the update via Bluetooth from smartphone or gateway. In particular, when the user interaction is required, a firmware upgrade should happen as quickly as possible, and therefore, the higher the throughput, the better. There are many facets of asset tracking. Some examples are tracking a bat in a hospital, tracking a pallet in a warehouse, tracking goods in transport, and tracking tools on a construction site. The common motivation in these use cases is to reduce the time to locate objects and to better utilize an existing asset. In addition to determining the position of an asset, environmental conditions from a sensor like temperature can also be communicated to a monitoring device. The requirements for wireless connectivity are again long distance communication, large broadcast message capacity for sensor data, and a common wireless standard for long-range communication in a warehouse and short-range communication to smartphones or smart glasses. Beacons enable a wide variety of use cases, such as indoor navigation in a commercial building like an airport, heat map generation in a shop environment, point of interest information in a museum, and maintenance information from vending machines. The amount of data that can be broadcast by a Bluetooth 4 beacon is limited to a short URL or ID. For next generation beacons, more contextual data will need to be transmitted, such as temperature or the stock level of vending machines. Therefore, a large broadcast message capacity is needed. Before we start, Talking about Bluetooth 5, I'd like to introduce the standardization body behind the Bluetooth standard and Toshiba's role in it. The consortium is called the Bluetooth Special Interest Group, or Bluetooth SIG for short. It was founded in 1998 with Toshiba as one of the founding members. To this day, Toshiba assumes a leading role as one of seven promoter companies. In total, there are more than 33,000 corporate members, which underlines the broad industry support for Bluetooth standard. Especially compared to other consortia, such as the Zigbee Alliance, with just over 400 corporate members. Bluetooth 5 offers a number of improvements. over previous versions of the standard. You may have heard these statements previously, but let's go through the key highlights of Bluetooth 5 again and unpack each of them on the following slides. The first one is a 4x range improvement compared to previous versions of the standard. In the initial slides, you often heard me saying that long range, high link budget and robustness are required for many of the new and emerging use cases. The 4x range improvement is what actually makes Bluetooth usable in these applications. Then we have the 2x speed improvement compared to Bluetooth 4.2, which has already seen an improvement in throughput from Bluetooth 4.1. The speed increase is essential for fast firmware upgrades, and it also has a number of other advantages we will talk about later. Last but not least, an 800% increase in broadcast message capacity that paves the way for next generation beacons and use cases. However, this is only one of the improvements that is part of the early advertising extension feature of Bluetooth 5. 
We will cover this in detail during the webinar. And all of this opens up almost limitless possibilities. Forex range. The Forex range improvement is achieved by a new Bluetooth 5 feature called LE Coded Phi. In Bluetooth 4 and also Bluetooth 5, the symbol rate is one mega symbol per second. Since every symbol carries one bit, the bit rate is one mega megabit per second as well. For example, a logical one is represented by the symbol one. However, in Bluetooth 5, there are two additional coding schemes available, which also make use of forward error correction, or FEC for short. In the first new coding scheme, a bit is coded into two symbols. For example, a logical one could be represented by the symbols 1 and 0. As there are now two symbols required to carry one bit, the bit rate is reduced to 500 kilobit per second, or half of the symbol rate. At first glance, this may look like a drawback, but we will discover the benefits of this approach later. The second new coding scheme uses eight symbols to transmit one bit. Hence, the bit rate is reduced to 125 kilobit per second, or one eighth of the symbol rate. A logical one could be represented by the symbols 11000011. As promised, let's now have a look at the benefits. By using the new coding scheme, the receiver sensitivity can be drastically increased. In case of our Toshiba Bluetooth 5 solutions, the receiver sensitivity is increased by 4.5 dBm at 500 kilobit per second and a whopping 10.5 dBm at 125 kilobit per second. This results in a much, much higher noise resistance in increasingly crowded 2.4 GHz spaces which results in a higher reliability. Compared to the 1 megabit per second mode, the range can be roughly doubled by using the 500 kilobit per second mode. By using the 125 kilobit per second mode, the range can be roughly quadrupled. This opens up a whole new world of use cases. If an application used repeaters to achieve long range, then the number of repeaters can be decreased by using the LE coded Phi feature. Due to the addition of forward error correction, some errors can be corrected by the receiver, and so retransmission of the packet can be avoided. This can lead to lower power consumption and reduced latency. In Bluetooth 4, errors could be detected but not corrected. So every time an error occurred, the packet needed to be retransmitted. So what are the practical benefits? In home and building automation applications, Bluetooth 5 makes it much easier to cover a whole building. For automotive applications, the connectivity in harsh, metal-rich environments can be made much more reliable. In smart agriculture and asset tracking applications, the area that can be covered is much greater than it ever was before. Also, in street lighting applications, <coughs> long distance in a capillary network between street lamps can be covered. For factory automation, the required robustness and reliability is greatly improved by the higher receiver sensitivity and forward error correction. It is important to note that the range increase does not come from a higher output power. So the peak power consumption stays roughly, at the, stays roughly the same, and the same power source can be used, for example, a coin cell. Also, the LE coded 5 feature only works together with a symbol rate of one mega symbols per second. We will talk about symbol rates, uh, we will talk more about symbol rates later. Furthermore, both sides need to support the optional LA Coded 5 feature in order to take advantage of it. Last but not least, the data rate can be dynamically changed between 1 megabit per second, 
500 kilobit per second and 125 kilobit per second. Two x speed. How does Bluetooth 5 achieve doubling of the speed? Via the new Bluetooth 5 feature called LE2M5. What is it? Well, we talked about the one megabit per second mode in Bluetooth 4 and 5 and the relation between symbol clock and data rate. Quick recap, every bit is represented by one symbol. Hence, a symbol rate of one mega symbol per second results in a data rate of one megabit per second. In Bluetooth 5, there's a new symbol rate of two mega symbols per second, doubled from Bluetooth 4. As the ratio between symbols and bits stays at one to one, the resulting data rate is two megabit per second. What are the benefits? As you may have guessed, the two times higher data rate results in approximately two times the, the throughput compared to Bluetooth 4.2 and about four times the, the throughput compared to Bluetooth 4.1. The maximum throughput is at about 1.4 megabit per second, which is about two thirds of the enhanced data rate or EDR mode of Bluetooth Classic. This is a remarkable improvement. Secondly, for a given amount of data, the airtime of packets is less as the data is transmitted more quickly. This means the transmitter is active for a shorter period of time, and so the overall power consumption may be decreased by up to 41% in case of Toshiba's Bluetooth 5 solution. This already takes into account the slightly higher power consumption of the transmitter in LE2M5 mode. The positive side effect of this is that the radio channel is less congested and there is less contention with other communication in the same frequency band. This means the spectral efficiency is greater. The 2 megabit per second link speed is backward compatible with previous versions of the standard as the link speed will be negotiated between both sides. Here are some examples of practical benefits of the new LE2M5 mode. In home and building automation applications, there are typically also other 2.4 GHz devices active, such as Wi-Fi or private Bluetooth devices. The shorter airtime helps to reduce the collisions with these devices. For automotive and factory automation applications, one of the benefits is to speed up firmware upgrades and so save time. Industrial applications may benefit from faster data logging and diagnostic. In sports and fitness applications, more, more and more sensor data will be collected and need to be transferred, for example, to a smartphone. The higher data rate helps to realize a better user experience. In general, the latency is improved by the LE2M5 feature, which leads to more responsive systems overall. Other things worth knowing are as follows. Similar to the LE Coded 5 feature that we discussed before, the LE2M5 feature is optional. The data rate can be dynamically changed and both sides need to support the feature in order to utilize it. But there must be a downside, right? Well, the drawback of the two megabit per second mode is that the range is reduced to about 80% of what can be achieved in the one megabit per second mode. So, the next key advancement of Bluetooth 5 is an 800% increase in broadcast message capacity, which basically means that an advertising packet can carry eight times the payload compared to Bluetooth 4. This might not sound like a big deal, but it is, as we will later see. How is that achieved? There is a new Bluetooth 5 feature called LE Advertising Extensions, which provides a couple of improvements to the existing advertising mechanism. Let's go through them one by one. The first change is the aforementioned increase in advertising packet size. 
Previously, only 31 byte of payload could be broadcasted, as indicated by the number 31 inside the dark gray boxes. In Bluetooth 5, up to 255 bytes per advertising packet are supported, which is more than 800%, but I guess 800% is a more catchy number. That's why it is commonly used. The increased packet size is shown by the dark red box with the number 255 inside. Secondly, the number of advertising channels is increased from 3 to 3 plus 37. 3 plus 37? What does that mean? Well, in legacy advertising mode, the payload is transmitted via three advertising channels as indicated by the three gray boxes on the left-hand side. Each represents one of the advertising channels. Channel 37, 38, and 39 are used for advertising. In Bluetooth 5's adver advertising extension mode, these three channels are now called primary channels and just carry the header of the advertising transactions and a pointer to one of the 37 secondary channels that carries the actual payload. The picture also shows the extended 255 byte payload that is transmitted via the secondary channel. The third improvement is that the data is sent only once. In legacy advertising mode, the payload is replicated on all three advertising channels. In Bluetooth 5's advertising extension mode, only the small header is replicated three times on the primary channel, but the payload itself is sent only once on the secondary channel. So, what are the benefits? As we've discussed, eight times more information can be broadcast because of the increased advertising packet size. Currently, beacons only send an ID or URL. An app that is typically connected to the cloud or website is required to provide further functionality. By adding, uh, by being able to broadcast more information in the packet itself, there is less need to download an app or connect the app to another device. By offloading the payload to one of the 37 secondary channels, there is less contention on the primary three advertising channels. Another benefit of the 37 secondary advertising channels is that any PHY can be used, including the LE2M PHY and LE coded PHY options that we've discussed earlier. This means that all of the benefits apply to advertising as well, such as low latency, greater spectral efficiency, lower power consumption, and higher throughput. The fact that the payload is only sent once reduces the power consumption and contributes to lower latency and greater spectral efficiency. The next improvement might be a little hard to understand from the wording itself. It's called High Duty Cycle Non-Connectable Advertising. Non-connectable advertising is used, for example, in Bluetooth Mesh to send messages to other nodes without the intention of establishing a connection. The minimum interval time between packets is 100 milliseconds in legacy advertising mode. Bluetooth 5 reduces the minimum, minimum interval to 20 milliseconds, which reduces the latency and increases the responsiveness and throughput in a Bluetooth mesh application. What are the practical benefits? The two technologies that benefit most from the advertising extensions are probably beacons and mesh networks. Mesh networks will drastically benefit from the shorter interval uh, between packets, especially in connected lighting applications in which latency plays a major role. Lower latency is required to switch a large number of luminaires within a very short period of time, such that the human eye is not able to notice any lag. Next generation beacons will provide much richer, more multifaceted sets of contextual data. Therefore, they directly benefit from the increased broadcast message capacity. Typical applications for next generation beacons are indoor navigation, asset tracking, and maintenance. 
Similar to the other key highlights of Bluetooth 5, advertising extensions are also backward compatible with existing devices. Bluetooth has 37 data channels in connection mode. In order to avoid interference with other radio signals, Bluetooth uses a technology called Adaptive Frequency Hopping, or AFH for short. This means channels with high interference can be avoided by hopping to a channel with less interference. This helps make Bluetooth perform well in busy radio environments. In Bluetooth 4, only 12 distinct patterns for channel hopping are supported. Therefore, there is a risk that a nearby Bluetooth transmitter may use the same channel selection pattern and so transmit on the ra same radio channel. Bluetooth 5 adds a new channel selection algorithm called Channel Selection Algorithm Number 2, or CSA Number 2 for short, which produces a pseudo-random channel hopping pattern and so reduces the risk of transmitting on the same radio channel. In this way, coexistence with other Bluetooth devices is greatly improved, as well as the overall robustness of connections. Devices can indicate whether they support the new channel selection algorithm in order to maintain backward compatibility. Since we covered the major advancements of Bluetooth 5, I would like to give you an overview of Toshiba's solutions for Bluetooth 5. In the upper left, we see a block diagram of the Bluetooth 5 controller family. Our lineup consists of two industrial versions and one automotive version. The industrial version is available with and without integrated flash memory. One improvement on the previous generation controller is that the true random number generator is now available in all versions of the controller. It is suitable for products aiming for FIPS 140-2 level. The main highlights of the Bluetooth engine can be seen on the right-hand side. The transmitter supports a maximum output power of plus 8 dBm, which is remarkable considering the integrated antenna matching circuit. Despite the high output power, the current consumption stays at only 11 mA for the transmitter. The current consumption of the receiver is only 5.1 mA, and in deep sleep mode, the current consumption drops to less than 100 nanoampere. A transmitter output power of plus 8 dBm is nice on its own. But in conjunction with the truly amazing minus 105 dBm receiver sensitivity in the 125 kilobit per second mode, the link budget amounts to a whopping 113 dBm, which sets a new benchmark not only in terms of maximum communication range, but also in terms of link budget per milliampere, as we will see on the next slide. On the feature side, our controller supports all the optional features that we talked about before, such as LE2M5 for 2x the speed, LE coded 5 for 4x range, and LE advertising extension for eight times broadcast message capacity, and high-duty cycle non-connectable advertising, which shortens the interval between advertising packets to reduce latency in a mesh network. Last but not least, also the new channel selection algorithm number two is supported for improved coexistence with other Bluetooth devices. Competitive landscape. On this slide, we see a diagram depicting the link budget in dB on the horizontal axis, which is a representation of the achievable communication range and the robustness against noise. On the vertical axis, there is the peak current consumption shown as the sum of transmitter and receiver peak current in milliampere. The peak current consumption during the data transmission is the dominant factor in the overall power consumption of Bluetooth communication, so, it is a good indicator for overall power consumption. The black and green dots represent current Bluetooth 4 controllers available on the market, while the red dots represent Bluetooth 5 controllers. 
Toshi Bus Bluetooth Folder 2 controller is perfectly suitable for applications that run on a battery and require the absolute lowest power consumption, where a long range is not a requirement. Our Bluetooth 5 solution, however, is optimized for the longest range while keeping power consumption at a low level. Not only is the link budget best in class, but also the link budget per milliampere sets a new record. Let's now have a detailed look at the Bluetooth 5 controller lineup and how to select the right version to fulfill your requirements. There are three chip versions. The first is an industrial version with integrated 128 kilobyte of flash, which is the right choice if the Bluetooth chip will be the main MCU in the system and the application runs on the embedded ARM Cortex-M0 core. This version has the part number TC35680. The second industrial version does not have integrated flash and it is targeted at systems where the main MCU with flash is a separate device in the system and the Bluetooth controller is only used for Bluetooth communication. The benefit of the flashless version is that the maximum temperature is extended to 125 degrees Celsius. The third der derivative is the Automotive Grade 1 version, which is a unique feature based on publicly available information. This version is based on the second industrial version and so doesn't have integrated flash memory and supports up to 125 degrees Celsius. In addition to the AECQ 100 qualification, the automotive version comes in a package with wettable flank, as this is often required in the automotive market. Later this year, there will be an industrial grade module available from our partner Panasonic that features Toshiba's TC35680 controller. The module will be similar to the Bluetooth for the 2 module that is shown on this slide. How to get started with Toshiba? The first step is to obtain a development board with Toshiba's Bluetooth 5 controller. There will be development boards available from Panasonic later this year, which can be purchased via our partner distributors. The development board will use the module that we discussed before. Again, the board shown on this slide is the current Bluetooth 4.2 board and the Bluetooth 5 version of it will be similar. Once you got hold of a board, it's time to register on our Bluetooth developer zone and download the software development kit or our SDK and uh, documentation such as a developer guide. In addition, you will find other documentation there like the Bluetooth IC data sheets and application notes. Several free of charge downloads are also offered on that website, such as profiles, PC tools, and a plugin for the Bluetooth Developer Studio, which is a tool offered by Bluetooth SIG. With regards to the profiles, there are standardized and proprietary profiles available, such as, such as for example, an SPP over BLE profile for cable replacement. Once you have started your development, you may need support. The first choice should always be the Bluetooth developer zone. Other support options include field application engineers from your distributor or module partner in case you are using a module. Also direct support from the Toshiba application engineering team is available. We have nearly reached the end of the webinar and therefore I would like to take the opportunity to summarize what we have learned so far. At first, we unpacked the feature early coded Phi, which enables quadrupling of the range and so opens up possibilities for whole home and building coverage and also outdoor usage. Then we looked at the early 2M5 feature that doubles the bit rate. Using this, spectral efficiency is improved and power consumption can be reduced. Furthermore, quick firmware upgrade, uh, upgrades are made possible and also new use cases in sports, fitness and medical applications can be addressed. Thirdly, 
We talked about advertising extensions that offer 8x broadcast message capacity, among other benefits. This technology is crucial for next generation beacons, lower mesh network latency, and connectionless data streaming in the future. Support for channel selection algorithm number two allows improved frequency hopping with, more, with many more than just 12 distinct patterns, resulting in improved coexistence with other Bluetooth devices. Before we enter the Q&A session, let me summarize the key topics of Toshiba's Bluetooth 5 solutions. Firstly, according to the Toshiba to Toshiba's analysis of publicly available information, our Bluetooth 5 chip offers the highest link budget, which translates into a longer communication range or higher robustness. Secondly, the link budget to peak power consumption ratio is also market leading. Then, there is a broad support for optional Bluetooth 5 features such as LE2M5, LE coded Phi, LE advertising extensions, and channel selection algorithm number two. Furthermore, a very wide temperature range from minus 40 degrees Celsius up to 125 degrees Celsius is supported by our lineup. An automotive version with AECQ 100 grade one and a package with vertebral flank will be available. And although not discussed in detail during the webinar, our Bluetooth 5 solution has one of the highest integration levels and only requires 11 external components.